Thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands to the Most High God and begin to bless His holy name. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration for another Congress. The Lord of Lords, worship the Ancient of Days. Give Him glory. Give him glory. Give him honor. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I want you to lift your voice to him and say, Father, during this Congress, please give me a pleasant surprise. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Father, during this Congress, please give me a pleasant surprise. A very pleasant surprise, a kind of surprise that I will never forget for the rest of my life. Father, please give me a very, very, very pleasant surprise. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed we give you all the glory we give you honor we give you all the glory we give you honor amen we give you all the glory God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for all the blessings of the past. Thank you for what we are going to do this week. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Ancient of days, the unchangeable changer, the one whose name is wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the holy one of Israel, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Almighty, glory be to your holy name. In all our lives, those who are here and those who are watching all over the world, during this week, Father, please do something new. Give every one of us a very, very pleasant surprise. At the end of everything, let your name be glorified. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Well, shake hands with two or three people, prophesy to them, and say, You will get your own turn around this week. And if you receive that, then let me hear you shout hallelujah. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, I have it on authority from my Father in heaven that for every day of this Congress, you will receive a new miracle. So if I were you, I would tell all my friends, don't miss a day. And um, I believe beginning from tomorrow, we will keep the two auditoriums open, the old one here and the new one, so as to make it easy for those coming from various parts of the country. You can go to whichever of the two auditoriums you want and the Almighty God will reach you there in Jesus' name. As for all my children who are watching all over the world, in the various viewing centers, uh, I want you to know the Almighty God is there with you, and He will reach you to and give you your miracles in Jesus' name. Tonight, we just want to praise God. I'm sure many of you would have wondered why has there been so much singing and dancing and jumping tonight? Uh, before the night is over, you will understand. I'm just interrupting the praise, just for a few minutes, to share one or two things, after which I finish. We will allow the elders, the old ones who will want to go and sleep so they can dream dreams, we will allow them to go. And then those of us who are young, who want to see visions, we will sing, we will dance until we are satisfied. And you will know the reason very, very soon. Mark chapter 10. Reading from verse 46 to 52. Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52. And while you open your Bibles, I want to say welcome to all our beloved brethren that have come from all over the world we will welcome you more appropriately when the rest have come. We know many of you are still on the way. Mark chapter 10 from verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. 
But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. <sighs> Let me tell someone straight away, your garment of shame will be thrown away tonight. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. When did he receive his sight? When are you going to receive your turn around? And follow Jesus in the way. This story is a story that you know very well. It's a favorite of evangelists. Any evangelist who hasn't got something to preach will just take this one and tell you to shout and shout, and you get your miracle and go. <laughs> but we are going to look at this story for the next one week because in there is your great turn around now let me start what exactly do we mean by turn around You will hear several definitions as we go along in the week. But the simplest one simply says, if you have been going backward, now begin to go forward. If you have been going downward, now begin to go upward. That's a simple one. That, that's the simplest definition. Now, what do we mean by great turnaround? We're talking about great turnaround when opportunities that you have lost suddenly make a turnaround and come back to you. And, and I, I want to appeal to you, I want you to be very attentive because somebody will get his or her turn around tonight. And it's going to happen before I finish preaching. So, so, so I will give you an illustration of a great turnaround. Some of you have heard the story before, but for the benefits of those who never had it, I, I will tell you. Several years ago, I went to the East to go and do something for work. On my way back, I got to Asaba. I didn't go with my car. So I stood by the way, by the roadside, flagging down cars, looking for someone who would give me a ride to Lagos. And whenever I saw any car that looks old, the kind of car that the owner will want to use for Kabu Kabu, I wave them and they didn't stop. I kept on waving, nobody stopped. 
Then all of a sudden, I saw a brand new Mercedes-Benz car. The one they used to call a Bokon. Those of you who are old, you will know what that one means. The biggest of the Mercedes in those days. Brand new. Driving towards me. I didn't bother to wave. Because I thought this one is not going to stop. But for one reason, after the driver has gone ahead for some time, he stopped and reversed. I'm using the Queen's English now. If this American English, they will say a back dog. In Nigeria English, he reversed. <laughs> When he got to where I was, he said, where are you going? Ah, I said, Lagos, sir. He said, jump in. Ah. <laughs> I laughed. He was sitting with his friend in front, so I jumped in at the back, threw my little bag on the floor, and sat at the owner's corner. He drove me all the way to Lagos. When we got to Lagos, he branched at a petrol station uh, somewhere in uh, Palm Grove. I said, thank you very much. He said, ah, where do you live? I said, Suru He said, don't worry, I will take you home. Every opportunity that has passed you by, we make a turn around. So when we talk about the great turnaround, and you will see it in the story of Bartimaeus, Jesus came to town, and he was going out of the town. He had already passed by Bartimaeus. He had already gone past. But something happened that caused Jesus to stand still and send for Bartimaeus. By the time that day was over, Bartimaeus had had several turnarounds. He had had a turnaround from darkness to light which is going to be the portion of someone tonight. <laughs> he had had a turn around from sickness to health. He had had a turn around from poverty to wealth. He had had a turn around from loneliness to becoming the center of attraction. He had had a turn around from barrenness to fruitfulness. He had had a turnaround from being unknown to becoming somebody the world is still talking about now. He had had a turnaround from curses to blessings. All oh, his enemies had become his messengers. Somebody is going to have a great turnaround today. If you are the one, let me hear you shout hallelujah. But let me quickly do just a little bit of teaching to lay the foundation for the rest of tonight and for the rest of the week. We need to note one, that God is a God of individuals. When he made you, he made you uniquely. There's nobody exactly like you in the whole world. I have a friend in Ghana, a great man of God. He had a brother, and they were identical twins. 
They were identical. They are identical in everything, including fingerprints, except their thumb prints. Everything alike, but they still differ in their thumb prints. So God is an individual God. He made you unique. And so whenever he is going to do something, he focuses on individuals. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Revelation 3 20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice. So to, during this week, I'm appealing to you. You are to love your neighbor like yourself. But that means you must love yourself first. This week, let your number one focus be yourself. Do you understand what I've just said? Mm. When it comes to crucial issues, you don't talk about we. You talk about me. Self first is no selfishness. Please understand that. Because you are going to notice as we go along this week that some people will be, will be doing some things and some people will be sitting down watching them. By now you must have noticed that some people have praised God, they've sang, they've danced until they were sweating. And some people have been watching. Don't be surprised. That's the way it is. Whenever it comes, for example, to things that are very, very crucial, like this week, God deals with individuals. Psalm 23 verse 1, Psalm 23 verse 1 said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. In verse uh, 6 there, Psalm 23 verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow who? Me. Me, me, me. There was a time when some, some of my brethren became very, very religious. When they want to close a meeting, they will say, uh, let's, let's uh, share. Uh, Psalm 23 verse 6 and they will say surely goodness and mercy shall follow us I say ha that's not in the Bible surely goodness and mercy shall follow who? me me so when it comes to praising the Lord it's an individual matter David said in Psalm 34 verse 1, Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Please, I want you to understand this. This is very, very serious. I, 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 I can't tell you everything that I know is going to happen this week. Daddy won't even allow me to tell you in advance. But believe me honestly, because you are so special to me, there has never been a week like this in your life before. And there may never, there may never be another week like this week in your life again. David said in Psalm 103 verse 1, Psalm 103 verse 1, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, 
bless his holy name. In Psalm 108, you can read it from verse 1 to 3, but verse 1 is enough. Psalm 108 from verse 1 to 3, he said, My heart is fixed within me. I will sing and praise the Lord. It is an individual matter. There was a crowd following Jesus Christ on the day that Bartimaeus got his turn around. And when Bartimaeus was crying, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, 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 me. I was going around in the night yesterday, I'm sure you know I will go around. I sneaked out at a time when I thought by now everybody would have gone to bed. And I was amazed that there were thousands on this camp yesterday crying to God for this Congress. <laughs> I said, Daddy, even if you didn't hear my prayer, you will hear the prayers of all these people. How many of you believe that God is going to hear your prayer this week? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. That's the first thing you need to note. This week, <laughs> it's an individual matter. It is between God and me. That's the first thing. Second thing that I want you to know is that when you go through the scriptures, you will find that Abraham's turn around came when he fed God. Genesis chapter 18, you can read it from verse 1 to 14. You know the story of Abraham very well. God had been promising him for 25 years. Then one day God was passing by. Abraham saw him and said, hey, you can't go. Come and eat in my house. He fed God. And his turn around came. Sir, what are you trying to say? <laughs> the, uh, my people, not too far from here, particular set of people near here, they sing a song. The song says in English, he doesn't eat eba. He doesn't eat a kokore. What does he eat? <laughs> In other words, the only food God wants from you is praise. Take note of that. Number three, just take note. Hannah got her turn around when she made God an offer that God cannot refuse. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 20. 1 Samuel 1, verse 9 to 20. Hannah had been coming to Shiloh for years. All of a sudden, she changed her prayer. And said, God, let's have a deal. Give me a son, and I will hand him over to you. I know you need a prophet. You give me the son, you have a prophet. God couldn't refuse that offer. Do you know there is an offer that God can never refuse? Psalm 50, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. He says, Whosoever offereth praise glorifies me. And he who orders his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of my Lord. God can never, never say no to praise. I've said it before. 
If you have prayed and you have not gotten an answer, try praise. If prayer fails, try praise. I don't want to be telling you stories that you already know, but you know of a, one of our brothers who died in the vestry on his wedding day, and the pastors had prayed all manners of prayers for 30 minutes, and it was getting colder. They changed their prayer to praise. And within minutes, he came back to life. Somebody is going to have a major turnaround tonight <laughs> by shouting the loudest hallelujah here. <laughs> Another thing you need to note when you have nothing else to offer God offer praise I give you an example Mark chapter 5 from verse 2 to 20 Mark 5 2 to 20 is the story of the madman of Gadara <laughs> he had nothing to give he was mad, mad. Madmen call him mad. He was living in the tomb. If it is offering time, there is nothing. What was he going to give? Madness? But he had one thing to give. When he saw Jesus, he fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And his turn around came. If you have nothing to give at all, give him praise. Let me hear you shout another hallelujah. know that when the Lord Jesus Christ himself wanted to perform his greatest miracle when he wanted to bring back somebody who has been dead for four days when he was about to hand over to someone who could say far far too late he started by praising his father in heaven. John chapter 11, verse 39 to 44. John 11, 39 to 44. He praised the God of heaven. And the man who has been dead for days had a major turnaround. And came back to life. If you follow the song, the special hymn that we sang tonight, you will see a verse there that says, Have you lost all hope? Are your bones now dry? Have you become dry bones? <laughs> this week, the wind of the Holy Spirit will blow. Not only will dry bones live again, dry bones will begin to fly once more. <laughs> so, what is it that Bartimaeus said at the beginning of everything? He said, Jesus, thou son of David. That's his secret. Jesus, thou son of David. That's how he started this request. What was he saying? He was saying to Jesus, I know you. 
<laughs> I may be blind, but I know you. I know you all the way to your root. I know your father. Your father is David. Your father is the one who had done a lot of impossible things. I know your father killed a liar with his bare hands. He killed a bear with his bare hand. Your father killed a Goliath with an ordinary stone. I know your daddy. And I know like father, like son. <laughs> That's why Jesus stood still. Who is that fellow that is calling me in all the way to my origin? As our people here, as the elders, when you want to get something from somebody, someone important, how do you go about it? There's something in my tribe that they call Oriki. They begin by saying, oh, you are the son of so-and-so, you are the son of so-and-so, etc., etc. And, and, and I, I think I've shared this one with you before. When I was very little, I used to sleep by my father on the mat. My father was uh, <laughs> so rich that poor people called him poor. And uh, in spite of that, he still had two wives and many children. And whenever it is time to go to school, whenever we are holidays over, in order that our mothers cannot come to him to ask for school fees, he will pick a quarrel with them because he had no money. But my mother always got my school fees. How, how did it, she do it? I've told you before. Very early in the morning, she will come and begin to eulogize my daddy. You are the son of so and so. You are the son of so and so. Uh, your father had a farm so large that the birds flew for three days and they couldn't see the end of the farm. And I'd be wondering, where is that farm? When your father threw a party, he fed the civilian, he fed the army. Hey! Remember? She was after money. She's trying to remind my daddy. <laughs> Maybe you have nothing now, but your father used to have. And as she went on, the son of so and so, the son of so and so, your father did this, your father did this, my father will begin to swell. And very soon you begin to hear him say, It's a great man you are calling. <laughs> and very soon you will hear him say, it will be well with you in this house. Ah, and my mother will just keep on pumping, pumping, pumping. At the end of the day, it is my father who will say, and what can I do for you today? And my mother will, will, will pump him a little more before he says, ah, well, we know things are hard, but uh, you know, your son is about to resign. My father will say, don't worry about that. He had no money. But as soon as my mom leaves, he will put on his garment and go out to go and borrow. The Almighty God has everything you need if you know how to eulogize him. If you know how to tell him, you are the king of kings, you are the lord of laws, you are the I am that I am, your name is wonderful, you are counselor, you are the mighty God, 
You are the everlasting Father. You are the ancient of days. You are Alpha. You are Omega. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You are the one who was. You are the one who is. You are the Almighty. You are the all sufficient God. Oh, there is no one like you. You reign supreme. You are the unchangeable changer. You are the great provider. You are the costless cause of all things, etc., etc. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. People have asked me again and again, tell us, what is your secret? I say, I have no secret. My secret is in the open. Anytime I come before my father and my God, I worship him first. You come to the altar and you begin to talk as if you are the owner of everything. You don't own anything. Your life is not even your own. But I know a God <laughs> who can turn a jungle to a city. I know a God who can pick somebody from an unknown village and bring him to come and stand before you now in the presence of the whole world. I know a God who can raise the dead. I know a God who can make the the, the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. I know a God who can bring water out of the rock. I know a God with whom nothing shall be impossible. I know a God who is the almighty, who is the most high, who is the all-sufficient God. I know a God who holds the heart of kings in his hands and can turn the, them like rivers in the desert. I know a God who speaks and it is done. I know a God who says, let there be light and there was light. I know a God that even the devil must take permission from him before he can do anything. I know a God who is the almighty. Go ahead, shout a big hallelujah to him. Because this is the week of the great turnaround. That's why we want to start right by praising him. That's why we want to worship him in such a manner that he will stand up and say, uh -uh, What's going on at redemption camp? Let me go and pay them a visit. Let me go and see what's going on here. But before we praise him further, because we're going to praise him tonight. You haven't seen anything yet. So, so those who want to dance, we dance. Those who want to jump, we jump. Okay, so as soon as I finish now, the elders are free to go. But those of us who are still young, hmm, we can be here to see tomorrow morning if you want to. You, you have the option. He says something though. He says he does not want the praise of the wicked. He says the sacrifice of a sinner, of a wicked man, is an abomination to him. Proverbs 15, verse 8. Proverbs 15, verse 8. He said, No, 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 no. Don't praise me. If we are living in sin, he doesn't want the praise of someone. 
we say dwelling in sin. So if you are not yet born again, if you are not yet washed in the blood of the Lamb, if you are still living in sin, for your own good, before I count seven, come and stand before me, come and surrender your life to Jesus, let his blood wash away your sins, and then your praise will become acceptable to him. I'm going to begin to count now, and if you want to come, you have to move very fast. I'm counting one. Remember, this is an individual matter. It is your own choice. It doesn't have anything to do with your friend. If you want to give your life to him, you want his blood to wash away your sins, you want to become a true child of the living God, so that your praise will become acceptable to him. Come now, two. Three. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Four. And do you know why those who are clapping, why their hands can never be empty? Because they are praising God. They are clapping for Jesus. So their hands can never be empty. It can never be empty. God will see to it. Four. Hurry up. And if you are in any of the viewing centers, just go to the altar. The men of God there will be there to attend to you. Five. Thank you, Lord. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Six. Oh, just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. I want to pray for salvation now, but if you are on the way, just keep coming. Keep coming. Okay, thank you. Now, those of you already in front, and those of you are on the way, cry to Jesus Christ now. Tell him, ah, I want you to save my soul. I don't want my praise to be an abomination to you any longer. I'm saying bye-bye to a life of sin. Please save my soul. Be my Savior, be my Lord, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Cry to him. He will save your soul. Tell him, I admit I'm a sinner, and only you can save me. So please wash me clean with your blood. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. That the blood that washed you clean, clean will wash them clean also. Let's intercede for them for about two minutes. And those of you on the way, just keep coming. Keep coming and pray as you come along. Ask Jesus to have mercy on you. Ask him to forgive all your sins and wash you clean. Today, with his powerful blood, thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. 
thank you for the power that is in your blood to wash away sins these people who have come father please receive them save their souls forgive all their sins let your blood wash them clean father i am praying that from now on you will write their names in the book of life you will receive them into the family of god and any time they praise you now receive their praise oh lord and if they cry to you for anything please answer them by fire thank you almighty god in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen now i want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward i want to say congratulations to you because from now on by the grace of god i'll be praying for you so i'm going to need your names your address and your prayer requests they will give you a card now which i want you to fill very quickly and you give it back to the counselors and then they will collate it and give me a copy and i promise you i'll be praying for you congratulations now while our new brothers and sisters are filling their forms i i want you to even just think for a while think of everything that god had done for you consider the fact that you could have been a still bath you could have been born dead Consider the fact that your mother could have had an abortion. Consider all the dangers that God has seen you through from the day you were born till today. Consider the salvation of your soul. And, and, I, will, and I will give you just two minutes to praise God on your own as an individual, even where you are seated before we begin communion praising again just for two three minutes while we are waiting for our brothers and sisters to fill their cards thank the almighty god thank him for life thank him for health thank him for strength thank you thank him for the mouth that can see speak the eyes that can see see the hands that can move the legs that can move Thank Him for salvation. Thank Him for preservation that you are even still in Him till now. Thank Him. It's worthy to be praised. It's worthy to be praised.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Now, before we begin another session of praise, again, let me please announce that anyone who wants to go after this one now, you are free to go. But those of us who want to stay on, you are free to stay for as long as we want. Ministers, you don't need to go back to the prayer for here. If we finish here, you just go home. The Spirit of God reminded me of a story. True story. Particularly, I'm sure it must be for a particular person who will say, why should I thank God? Uh, I've suffered some losses, etc., etc. Several years ago, 1981 or 82, I don't know exactly the year and nine anymore. My elder sister lost her husband. And the two of them were very intimate. So she was heartbroken. Everybody tried to console her. She refused to be consoled. She won't eat. She won't, she won't stop crying. Finally, a woman living not too far away from her house came and said, uh, you lost your husband and you are crying. My sister said, yes. My sister said, yes. So what? The, man, the woman said, please, just do me a favor. Follow me. Follow you to where? Follow me to my house. What for? The woman said, when you get there, you will know. So out of curiosity, my sister followed her. When they got to the house, there was a room there with the door locked. She told my sister to listen, listen to what is going on behind the door. And my sister had the the sound of a very wild animal. My, my sister shrank back. Ah, what animal are you, are you keeping at all? The woman said, that's my brother. Has become a wild animal. I dare not open the door for her. I can't kill him. I wish he would die. But I can't kill him. Your husband is dead. You refuse to be comforted. Hear what is coming behind the door. In every tragedy that, that happened in your life, if God could open your eyes to see the greater tragedy that he has saved you from, you will praise him. In every losses you have suffered, somebody said, the mother of Judas Iscariot would have praised God if Judas Iscariot has died as a child. In all things, give thanks. I'm going to lead us. I will sing my own song now. If you want, you can join me in dancing. And then we will transfer to the band and they can continue ministering to us. But let me give you one assurance. Even as we are praising God tonight, prison doors will open. 
yokes will be destroyed. And those who have been held captive will begin to walk free. Now, you help me sing my own song, and please uh, don't make it too fast because I want to dance to it, okay? I, I've, seen, I've seen those of you who are young. You, the way you are dancing is a bit too fast for me. I used to dance like that, but that was some 40 years ago. Now, praise him, praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise him. Praise him. King of glory, praise him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen, amen. Praise Him, praise Him, we all love Him, praise Him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen. Praise Him, praise Him, King of glory, praise Him. Praise Jehovah, hallelujah, amen. Over to you. I want you to sing that song. Sing it for maybe another five minutes or so before you begin to add your own. And those of you who want to join me in dancing, those of you who want to dance with me, that at long last our turnaround has come. You are welcome. Over to you now. Praise 